Welcome to Limitless Church. Welcome to the first service of the year. And we're super glad uh, you have decided to click on that button and watch this video and join us for the New Year service. Thank you so much for doing so. Please let us know who you're watching with, if you want to reveal that. But uh, let us know where you're watching from. Also, let us know if you want us to pray for you about anything. We would love to do that. Adi is behind that camera, and Adi prays for people, along with a whole team of people. She's smiling. You can't see her smile. I wonder if that smile is a right smile or a good smile. But anyways, uh, prayers later. Right now, it's time for the word. It's time for the first sermon of the year, the first sermon of 2021. And I've titled this sermon, Level 2021. How cool is that? How cool is that title? Just like video games, right? Levels in video games, Level 2021. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, welcome to Level 2021. Turn to the other neighbor as well, the one that you hate right now. <laughs> Level 2021. And, and, and the reason why I've titled this title um, Level 2021, because I honestly believe last year was like a game, right? 2020 was like a game. Uh, do you remember those memes, those Jumanji memes that came out last year? Every month, I have one saved here. Let me show you. You, you, you rem remember this one? You remember this one? Congratulations, you made it to July 2020. Welcome to level 7 of Jumanji. You remember this? Everybody was sharing these memes every month because honestly, this describes 2020. That face describes 2020, right? Everyone was like... Because it was, it was so unpredictable. 2020 was so, um, so uncertain, right? Everything was uncertain in 2020. Your, your jobs were uncertain. Your, your relationships were uncertain. Your, um, your, your finances were uncertain. Church was uncertain, right? Nobody knew what was going to happen in 2020. Everyone was clueless and uncertain. And I remember how we started 2020, the New, Year, New Year's Day of 2020. Everyone was full of hope. You remember that day? You want to remember that day? Right? Churches all over the world were giving prophetic words for 2020. Prophets were releasing prophecies. Everyone was saying, 2020 is going to be a great year. 2020 is going to be such a phenomenal year and we're going to do this, this and that. Right? I, I, re I remember all those prophecies watching. Thank God at Limitless Church, we didn't have one of those great prophecies. Right? My word for 2020 last year on New Year's Day was serving. You remember that? I had a word, my, my title of the first sermon, New Year's sermon was, Can I Call You to Serve? And my word was, God is calling you this year to serve, right? And we did so much serving last year, didn't we? We were serving all the time. We were helping each other out, calling each other, um, cooking food for each other. You remember that, right? I'm not saying I'm some super accurate prophet uh, at all, okay? I'm just saying I'm relieved that I'm, uh, my word did not fall so flat and I did not get it so terribly wrong, right? But so many prophets got it so terribly wrong in 2020, right? So many accurate prophetic voices all over the world got it absolutely wrong. So many prophecies completely went wrong. International prophecies went wrong. Political prophecies went wrong. Personal prophecies went wrong. Even babas and gurus and mystics got it so terribly wrong last year. 2020 was a year of failed prophecies. Right? Some people were like, okay, now 2020 is going to expose false prophets. Because so many wrong prophecies. So, you know what? I thought um, this year I'm going to play it safe. All right, this year, because um, you never know, right, what can happen. So I got lucky last year. This year, I might not get very lucky. So I thought this year, instead of me giving the church a word, I'm going to ask the church for a word for 2021. 
How about that? We're going to reverse roles now. All right? So let me ask you, because you are the church, right? So let me ask you for a word for 2021. It's your turn to become prophets now. All right? So come on. Shout out words that you feel 2021 is going to be like. Come on. What's your word? New life. Faith. Hope. That's it? Challenge. You said restore. He said restoration first and then he said restore. Then next he'll say rest. He'll just like cut. Then he'll say Ray. Like Adi learned to say Ray after. She's not even going and she says Ray all the time. Okay, let me make it easier for you. Since you guys are so scared of, of giving prophetic words, let me make it easier for you. Let me rephrase that question. Let me ask you another one. Let me ask you this question. Do you think 2021 will be a good year? Okay, but, but, okay, not so easy. If you say yes, 2021 is going to be a good year, okay? I'm going to make note of that because there's a camera back. I'm going to make note of that and I'm going to contact you just in case 2021 falls flat. Just in case 2021 turns out to be terrible like 2020 or even worse, I am going to contact you. Maybe I'll call you on the stage and I'm going to remind you, see, you told 2021 is going to be a good year. I'm going to do that, okay? So that's the challenge now. Because you need to be responsible with your prophetic words, right? You can't just release words and say yes, no. That is what prof prophetic is, okay? So now... Who wants to accept this challenge? Who wants to stay still that 2021 is going to be a good year? Okay. Vic, Sunil, you put your hand up or down? Which one was it? You're scratching your hand? Uh, half hand? Okay. Average year? Good year? No? Uh? Okay, so... Uh, no. That, is, that has to be an extreme introvert, like terrible introvert, because introverts love 2020. Okay, so here's what we will do, okay? Let me take you back. Since you're talking about 2020, let me take you back to 2020, just for a moment, okay? Just for a, a slight moment. How many, how many of you would want to go back to 2020? Like, given a chance, okay, now you've said yes, okay? Given a chance, how many of you would like to live 2020 all over again with the same mess, with the same uncertainty, with the same people, with the same issues, okay? How many of you want to do that? Okay, Isaac, extreme introvert for some reason. Where are, where are the other introverts? Where are those people? Because I remember, okay, Lizelle, yes, thank you. Thank you for being so honest. But where's the other introvert? I'm looking at you right now and I'm doing this. She's not putting up her hand, but I remember there were people who I called and they were like, you know what, I love 2020. When the lockdown hit, I love this. In fact, I was praying for 2020. I was praying for the lockdown, right? So these are the people you've got to blame. Okay, for everyone who had a sucky 2020, those are the people. Blame Vic, because she prayed for 2020 to be exactly like that. But, um, yeah, you ask me, no way I'll go back to 2020. Like, take me back to any year in history. Take me back to the dinosaur age, but, but not 2020. Like, no, I'm done with 2020. Like, erased from the memory. I had a terrible year. Yeah, I had good years, but, you know, it was terrible. No more 2020. But let me take you back, okay? 2020, just for a moment, and I'll get you out, I promise. But um, let me ask you this question. I asked you, what do you think 2021 is going to be like? What if I asked you, describe 2020 to me? If you could describe 2020 in one word, what would that word be? Now at least you can answer, right? This is easy. All right, come on, shout out your answers. Virus, challenging. Learning, uncertain, what? Sexy, what, what? 
disease. Okay, okay. I'm like, it was a sexy number. I know, 2020, right? People were like, I'm going to get married in 2020. Such a nice number. Let's go to, let's have this and that on 20. It was such a terrible year. Research was, was, was held all over the world. Many surveys were held with the same question. News companies, media companies asked the same question to a lot of people all over the world. They asked them, describe 2020 in one word. And uh, many answers were thrown, many words were thrown. There was one common word though, more than any other word. There was one common answer. And that answer, that word was change. Most people in the world describe 2020 as the year of change. And I'm sure most of you in this room, most of you watching online will agree to the fact that 2020 indeed was a year of change. Right? 2020 was a year of change. 2020 changed so many things. It almost changed everything. Right? 2020 changed your plans. You had plans, it changed your plans. 2020 changed your friends, right? Suddenly now you're friends with your neighbor. You used to not even look at your neighbor, but now you're trapped in lockdown. That's the, you're friends with your plumber, you're friends with your watchman suddenly. My wife knows my watchman's number, his kid's name and everything. But you know, uh, you, it, you changed your perspective, right? Perspectives changed. Everyone suddenly became a philosopher in 2020, right? Quoting things, very heightened philosopher. A uh, lot of people started appreciating nature, right? Because you don't have your job to appreciate or you don't have your job to go to, so you're staring at trees now. And you're like, wow, trees are amazing. The sun is amazing. The moon is, a it was always there, <laughs> always there, right? But so many things changed. Hobbies changed, right? So many people learn to cook. Now everyone calls themselves a chef. Everybody is cooking now, right? Except for Ash, because uh, poor thing, like Ash really thought 2020, since the whole world is cooking, if I can do it, then it's gonna be this year, right? It has to be this year. And she tried, but you know, somehow she didn't learn to cook. Like I remember one day she, she said at staff, she said, guys, I'm gonna cook for you guys. Today I'm gonna bring some lunch. And we said, you know what? Uh, I, think it's, I think we should take the day off, right? Because Ash is cooking, we never know, like, you know. <laughs> So, so she, yeah, her hobbies didn't change. She didn't learn to cook. Maybe this year, maybe 2021. 20, but maybe give up, right? Why do you want to learn to cook? Just give up. Right? Find a husband who cooks. Or you have a mom who cooks, but um, cooks so well. But so many things changed, right? Your, your jobs changed. Some of you changed jobs. Some of you lost your job. Some of you got new jobs. At least, the, and this is true for everybody all across the world, at least the way you work changed for everyone, right? One term we all learned in 2020, WFH, work from home, right? We, we, we learned that you can, you can, your bedroom is your office now, and you can go to office just with a shirt. You don't need to wear pants to go to work, right? We learned that, like imagine, imagine someone told you, you're gonna, imagine this prophet told you, one day you'll go to work without your pants. Would you believe? No way, right? But 2020, it happened. You went to work without your pants. But, but one more word we all learned in 2020. And that one word, this is global, was Zoom calls. Right? Nobody knew what Zoom was before 2020. Now Zoom calls are a part of your life, at least in 2020, right? Yes? No? You love Zoom? You hate Zoom? How many love Zoom? How many hate Zoom? The others, you, <laughs> you, you, what were you doing, guys? Like, you don't know, living under a rock. Let me say this about Zoom, okay? Uh, respectfully, but I don't know, respectfully, but boldly, maybe. I hate. I absolutely hate Zoom, all right? And, and look, uh, you might be someone who loves Zoom. You might be someone who is completely dependent on Zoom. You might be someone, you might be the owner of Zoom, which is highly unlikely the, the owner of Zoom is watching our services. But um, I don't even know who owns Zoom. But I hate Zoom. 
And the reason why I hate Zoom is because Zoom makes you look so ugly, right? Have you realized that? No, no one told you that? No one told you you look ugly on a Zoom call? Okay, let, let this pastor tell you the truth, okay? You look ugly on a Zoom call. All right, it's, it's really bad. Everyone looks ugly. Even this handsome guy looks ugly on a Zoom call. That's why we don't have church on Zoom. I know Zoom is like a great app for churches all over the world, but I told my guys, I told my team, never are we going to have church on a Zoom call, okay? Please, we love YouTube. We love Instagram, but not Zoom, right? But, but Zoom somehow makes you look so ugly, right? Yeah, I, and I would understand if Zoom made you look natural. I would understand if Zoom made you look the way you look like in real life, without filters, right? Unlike, unlike, um, unlike Instagram and Facebook. Because how many of you know Instagram and Facebook makes you look better than you actually look, right? You, you knew that already? I hope you know this at least. Like, I hope you know the girl that you have a crush on on Instagram doesn't look like that in real person, okay? She's, she's uglier than that, okay? I hope, like, like, never date somebody or please don't get married to someone based on their Instagram or Facebook posts. Like, please, because you'll be shocked in real life. And here's an advice, okay? Here's an advice uh, from a guy who did a lot of marriage counseling. Um, if you're someone who wants to get married, and there are people sending you profiles. Is that what it's called? Profiles? Profiles, right? First of all, that's like not cool. But if you're someone who's, who wants to get married, people are sending you profiles. And if those profiles are pictures on Instagram and Facebook, please don't fall for that guy or that girl. All right, please. Because the real person is, is way uglier than that. All right, please don't do that. And here's another, here's another advice. And this is for everybody. Never believe, never ever believe a picture with a caption that says, no filter. Never, okay? That is one picture you should never believe. Because think about it now. Why would someone say, no filter? Right? Why would someone do that? It's like that guy who goes around the room and says to everyone, hey, by the way, it wasn't me who farted, okay? It wasn't me who farted, right? You know, those are the people who actually do it, right? Now you know. But, but Zoom is completely uh, opposite of social media. Zoom is, Zoom is like, you know what? We are going to change the world by making people look ugly. That is what Zoom decided. I honestly believe the, the founder of Zoom did not sit down one day and say, you know what, I'm going to invent a, a video calling app. I believe the owner of Zoom had a crush on a girl on Instagram, and she turned out to be ugly. And he said, you know what? This is my revenge to the world. 2020. China can release coronavirus, I will release an app which will make people ugly. I'm making the world look ugly. Because no matter what you do on a Zoom call, no matter how much makeup you put on, right, Sabrina, no matter how much lighting you do, no matter what background you choose, somehow you look so ugly on a Zoom call. So ugly on a Zoom call. Right? Here's, here's, a, here's a business idea, okay? This might change the world, actually. So if, you, if you're in, this might change the marriage proposal business. Why don't we do marriage proposals on Zoom calls? Imagine that, right? Because if you love someone on a Zoom call, marry that person. Because that person looks so good in real life. I'm telling you. But uh, here's my point, okay? Some of you are like, is this the New Year service? It is. Is this my word? Like, hate Zoom? Yes, it is. But no, here's, here's my point, okay? This is what I've realized about Zoom, about Facebook, and about Instagram. You want me to tell you? Zoom, Facebook, Instagram. Facebook, Instagram is a filter. Facebook, Instagram makes you look better than you actually look. Zoom makes you look uglier than you actually look, right? But, but the mirror in your bathroom makes you look exactly the way you look. Zoom is a filter, Instagram is a filter, but your mirror is the real picture of you. In the same way, 2020 is just a filter. 
2020 is a filter that you're seeing your future through. 2020 is a filter that you're seeing your life through. 2020 is not the real picture of your future. Because 2020 did not change your future. 2020 did not change uh, your life ahead. 2020 doesn't determine your life. 2020 doesn't dictate your future. 2020 uh, does, not, uh, does not make your future. 2020 is not an accurate picture of your future. If you want to look at your future, don't look through the filter of 2020. If you want to look at your future, if you want to see what your future looks like, look at your future in the mirror of your life. Because your life has a mirror. And that mirror is the word of God. That is the mirror. That is the true picture, not 2020. And I had to say this because I've heard so many people come to me and say, pray pastor because my life has changed. Pray pastor because my future has changed. With so much fear in their hearts because they're looking at their future ahead based on last year, based on the mess of 2020. They're looking to build a future based on a mess. And I'm here to tell you, 2020 will never paint an accurate picture of your future. It's just a filter. It's only the Word of God that will show you what your future looks like. And today, on the first Sunday of the year, on the first Sunday of 2021, I want to show you your future. I want to show you what your future is going to look like in 2021 and the days ahead, in the mirror of the Word of God. Eyes on the mirror. Everyone, open your eyes. Look at the mirror. This is what your future is going to look like. One, two, three. Read with me. Jeremiah 29, 11. This is your future. This is what God is saying. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. There are plans for... There are plans for... There are plans for... Tell your neighbor, God has a plan for... There are plans for good and not for disaster. To give, a, to give you a future and a hope. That's it. That should make you jump up and jump with excitement because for the first time, you're hearing something today. You're hearing that God has a future and a plan for your life in 2021. 2021 is nothing that you imagine 2021 is everything that the creator of the universe has imagined for you that is how joyful you should be this is your future this is what your life is going to look like this is what your plans are going to look like because they're God's plans 2020 did not change your future 2020 did not change your life 2020 did not change next year. 2020 did not change 2021. Why? Because 2020 did not change God's word. And your future is in the word of God. Your future is written by God himself. And nothing can change it. Nothing can change it. No, no virus can change it. No pandemic can change it. No 2020 can change it. No, no enemy can change it. No, no government can change it. No political party can change it. No law can change it. No devil can change it. No one, nothing can change your plan that God has for you. Only one person can change it. Only one person. And that person is you. Only you can stop God's perfect plan for your life. Only you. Only you. And the way you stop God's plan for your life is by stopping to hope. The moment you stop hoping, that's when you stop God's perfect plan for your life. I asked you a question earlier. I asked you, um, how many of you think that 2021 is going to be a good year? 
Some of you said yes very excitedly. Some of you did not say anything. Um, I don't know what your yes is based on. I don't know what your anything is based on. I don't know what your silence is based on. Maybe fear, maybe uncertainty. But let me say this, okay? Let me say this to everybody who's silent. Let me say this to everybody who does not know why they're saying yes to 2021. Let me say this. If you're not saying that 2021 is going to be a good year, then what you're actually saying is that 2021 is going to be a bad year. Again? Again? If you're not saying 2021 is going to be a good year, what you're actually saying is 2021 is going to be a bad year. If you're not hoping for 2021 to be a good year, then you're actually hoping for 2021 to be a bad year. Because here's the thing about hope that you should know. If you're not living in hope, you're living in despair. Because in this life, there's no living in neutral. This life on earth does not have a neutral gear. In this game called life, if you're not going one level up, then you're going one level down. In this game called life, there's no staying at the same level. Do you know why? Because this game called life is a war game. It's a war game. You're living in a war zone. This planet Earth is a war zone. And you have an enemy and this enemy is waiting to attack you. And the enemy attacks you the moment you stop attacking. And here's the key. Your weapon of attack, your weapon in this game called life, your weapon in this war zone called life is hope. Hope. And I believe the biggest thing that we lost in 2020 was hope. More than anything that people all over the world lost in 2020, more than losing jobs, more than losing money, more than losing loved ones and relationships, I feel people all over the world lost hope. There's a sense of hopelessness filled in people's hearts. And I don't want that people to be this people. So today, I don't want to give you a word. What are you going to do with a word? You don't even take notes down anymore, right? We are this generation that doesn't take notes down anymore. We have phones, we have apps, we have paper still. It's still available, but we don't take down notes. So I don't, I don't want to give you a word. I want to give you a weapon. I want to give you this weapon called hope. My, my hope is that you walk out of that door with a weapon called hope to win this life, to win this game, to win this game called life, to win level 21. That's my hope for you today. Hey, I hope you're enjoying the word. In the meanwhile, let me quickly explain to you how you can give to support our church and ministry. We've made it easy for you to give today. You can give via Google Pay or via bank transfer. The details of that are on your screen. We also want to say thank you for continuing to support us with your prayers and with your giving. But right now, let's get back to the word. So this is what I'm going to do. Okay, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a weapon. I'm going to give you an application. I want to give you a practice. Because here's the thing, you might hear great words, you might hear great sermons, but if you don't do anything with it, it's useless. You might have the best preacher in the world preaching to you, but if you're not doing anything with your sermon, it's useless. So I'm, I'm going to give you a practice. Say practice. I'm going to give you an application. I'm going to give you one application, okay, just one. It's a one-step message. It's a one-point message. I'm, I'm not a preacher that preaches 10 steps or 5 steps or 3. Just one. Just one simple step. Just one powerful step to help you live this life full of hope. Because I want you to be those people who are bubbling with hope. 
at all times, in all situations. You want that? If you want that, you want that? Okay. So today I'm going to give you one step. Next week I'm going to give you another step. The other week I'm going to give you another step. In fact, in fact, I'm going to start a brand new sermon series right now. Right in the middle of a sermon, I'm starting a sermon series. Right? You guys okay with that? Can we stay for another two hours? Yeah, really? <laughs> no, it's just going to be one step of the sermon series. I'm going to start a brand new sermon series, and it's going to be a sermon series like never before. You've never heard a sermon series like this at Limitless Church. It's going to be completely different, completely application-based, completely practical-based. All right, and, and I'm going to give you tools to actually apply and live this life. And if you're in this room, then you know the title of my sermon series already. In fact, if you're in this room, you have the title of my sermon series on your wrist. Take a look at your wrist. What does it say? That's the title of my new sermon series, Limitless Life. Has nothing to do with Limitless Church. Has everything to do with a word that you know so well in Christianity. The other word for limitless life is eternal life. A life without end, a life without limits. And that is what I want to speak to you about. That's the weapon that I want to give you. Right? So let me read the, the, main, the main scripture for this new sermon series. I'm going to read to you the scripture that will define 2021 for you. You want a word? You want a verse? You want a scripture for 2021? This is the one, all right? And I made it so easy because this is, I believe, the most famous verse in Christianity. Most of you in this room know this verse by heart, all right? You ready? Three, two, one. John 3.16. John 3.16. The simplest, the most popular verse in Christianity but I believe the most powerful verse in Christianity. This is what it says. You can read with me. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Have eternal life. Have limitless life. The whole purpose of Jesus coming to earth is to give you eternal life. It's to give you limitless life life. That's the purpose. The, the, the purpose of Jesus, the purpose of His church, the purpose of limitless church, the purpose of everything that we do every week, the purpose of, um, the purpose of coming together every Sunday, the purpose of uh, me, my, my role, me as a pastor, our purpose is to, for you to have eternal life. It's so that you have limitless life. That's the purpose. That is what we exist for. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to break the scripture. And I'm, I'm going to give you the most important part of the scripture that I believe we've probably not seen before. Here's what we're going to do. John, John 3.16, eternal life. According to the Bible, according to the Bible, if you... If you believe in Jesus, all right, just that, just believe in Jesus, the Bible says you have eternal life, right? You already have it. That's it. No conditions, no, no commandments, no criteria, just one small thing, belief in Jesus, faith in Jesus, and you have eternal life. You have limitless life, right? So let me ask you, put your hand up if you believe in Jesus. Come on. Put your hand up if you believe in Jesus. All right. So you have eternal life already. You have it. But the question is, are you living it right now? Are you experiencing it right now? The confusion in Christianity is that we've been told over and over again that eternal life is, is something that starts after this life on earth ends. Right? We've been told in Christianity that uh, we, after we die on earth, we go to heaven, and that life in heaven is called eternal life. 
And that's true. The life in heaven is called eternal life, but eternal life does not start in heaven. Eternal life starts right here on earth. Eternal life starts with Jesus. Eternal life starts when you start believing in Jesus. It starts right here. So you're sitting there and you already have eternal life. You already have it. But you're not living it. You're not experiencing it. You're sitting there with something that you have, which is so amazing, so powerful, so revolutionary, that can change your life and the lives of others around you and can change the world. But you're not doing anything with it. You have eternal life. And today I want to show you how to use that life. You want to know how? Let me read to you how. This is what Jesus said. Just before he was arrested, he said, after saying these things, Jesus looked up to heaven and he said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son so that he can give glory back to you. For his, he has given him authority over everyone. He gives eternal life. Say eternal life. He gives eternal life to each one you have given him. And this is the way. Check this out. Okay, this is the tool. This is practical way you put it into practice. This is the way to have eternal life is to know you. To know you. The only true God and Jesus Christ, uh, the one you send to earth. What does it mean to know you? Jesus is not talking about head knowledge. Jesus is talking about experiential knowledge. Jesus is talking about relational knowledge. He, he doesn't mean, do you know the Bible? Do you know scriptures by heart? Do you know John 3.16? Do you know Jeremiah 29.11? Do you know these scriptures? He's not talking about that. He's talking about, do you know that God is with you and God is for you? Jesus is talking about having an awareness that God is with you and for you in every situation and every day of your life. The new year, we're going to start the new year with God awareness. We're going to start this year by being aware that God is with me and for me. He's not just with you. He's not just like this friend who's with you but always fighting against you. He's for you. He's a father who is for you. He's not against you. He's for you. My challenge to you today is to practice this awareness that God is with you and is for you. He's with you, for you. With you, for you in every situation in your life. You need awareness. Because it's like, it's like driving, right? While you're driving, you need awareness. Without awareness, you cannot drive. Without awareness, you're going to crash, right? You're going to crash. You need to be aware of so many things while you're driving. You need to be aware of, of, of the car. You need to be aware of the gears. Amen. Karen just got a license. You need to be aware of, of, of the, the way you drive, the, which side of the road. But most importantly, you need to be aware of the road, right? Without being aware of the road, you're going to crash. Without the awareness of the road, you're going to crash. In the same way, without the awareness of God in your life, you're going to crash in life. You need awareness every day of your life. Need to be aware that God is with you and God is for you. God is with you, God is for you. Here's what you do. At work, at your workplace, practice awareness that God is with you and for you. And I can challenge you, it will change the way you work. It will change your work. It will change the productivity of your work. When you're facing a difficult situation, practice awareness that God is with you and God is for you. And it will change your situation. If you're, if you're facing a sickness, practice awareness that God is with you and God is for you. Practice that awareness and see what's going to happen with your sickness. Because think about this now, right? Jesus said that he's never going to leave you, never forsake you. He lives with you, right? He lives in your heart. Yes? 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 And then you're facing a sickness in your body. How will sickness stay when Jesus is staying in the same place? Right? The key is awareness. 
We know the words, we know the prayers, we know where to go to pray. We know to feel the Spirit, but we don't know to be aware in our head, in our minds. Everything in Christianity has to do with your mind. Practice awareness. When you're being attacked, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, practice awareness that God is with you and for you. When you're being attacked in your finances, practice awareness that God is with you and for you. Because here's, here's a secret, okay? Let me tell you a secret from the other side. A secret from hell. You want to learn? You want to know a secret from hell? Yes. Devil didn't tell me. Jesus told me. But uh, the Bible tells me this. But here's a secret from hell, okay? The enemy that is attacking you knows that God is with you and God is for you. And the reason why he still attacks you is because he knows that you are not aware that God is with you and God is for you. The devil knows that you don't know that God is with you and God is for you. That's why he keeps on attacking you. And I'm here today to tell you, to give you this practice, a practical application to be aware that God is with you and for you. Simple, 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 right? God is with me, God is for me. Be aware of it in everything you do, everywhere you go. Because this is a new year. This is a new season. This is a new level. This is level 2021. And you cannot play at this level without the awareness of God in your life. You cannot play at this level without the weapon of hope. You cannot play at this level without this limitless life. You cannot. And the reason why we, we printed these words, limitless life, we were supposed to print something else. right? The vision of the worship team. I'll not tell you what it is, but we then decided to print the limitless life. And the reason why we said, let's print this, is to, to, so that you can have a reminder every day of the life that Jesus wants you to live of the life that Jesus died for, of the life that you can start living right now by just practicing the awareness that God is with you and God is for you. God is with you and God is for you. I think it's time. I don't know about you, but I think it's time to start living this limitless life. What do you think? What do you think? I think it's time to, to stare 2021 in the face and, and say to 2021, I'm ready. I got my wristband, but I got awareness of God in my life. 2021, here we come. We're so, so ready. I think it's time to do that. What do you think? If you believe that, give me a loud shout of amen. surrounds me I know the one who surrounds me if my God is with me then who can stand who can stand against me I know the one surrounds me yes I know the one who surrounds me if my God is for me if my God is for me then who can stand who can stand against me Deliverance for my.
Yes, I am a child of God. I'm aware I'm no longer a slave to fear. And I am a child of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this life. Thank you for this limitless life that we have from you. We can rest, we can live our lives with the assurance that you are with us and you're for us in every situation and in every day of our lives. Lord, I speak a blessing over every single person in this room, everyone gathered here today, their families and their extended families, their friends. Lord, I pray a blessing over them in this new year, 2021 that your favor might increase your grace and your, your love would be seen in everything that they do and in every place that they go. God, I speak dreams, visions, encounters and a deep revelation of your love and of who you are for them and through them, Lord. I pray for a, an amazing year, 2021. I bless this year. I pray for an excellent year, 2021. And I want to say this to every single person here. Happy New Year. Happy 2021. Go live it. Go win it. We're ready. We're so ready. Happy New Year. God bless you guys. I'll see you next week.